do you really need an MCAT prep course or an MCAT tutor? Do they actually help increase your score or is it all psychological? Is it, uh, you know, uh, the placebo effect or do they actually help you be able to get to that next stage? How can you figure it out? Do some people need it and some people don't? If that's the case, how would you know? Today, that's what I want to talk to you about today. And I want to see if I can help you make that decision for yourself, because this is a, uh, a little bit of a, a serious question for most of you going through the pre-medical journey. And one of the things you got to do, you got to write that MCAT. Nobody wants to write it, but you have to do it. But that's a big question, whether you, or not you're going to need uh, something like an MCAT prep course or an MCAT tutor to help you out. Now, before I get started, my name is Baruz Momeni. I'm the CEO and founder here at BMO Academic Consulting. Welcome to another episode of our Admissions Expert One Question Podcast. If you haven't watched any of these, I just got to tell you these are super un unscripted uh, and there's no fancy music, no fancy uh, sound effects, nothing like that. Uh, every week we take one topic for you guys, we dissect it in any, any different way we can. And we try to give you the answer so you could figure this out all on your own. I got absolutely nothing to sell you during this video. So uh, sit tight and I'm gonna try to see if I can help you make this uh, decision for yourself. All right, so do you need an MCAT prep course or an MCAT tutor? How can you tell? And before I tell you how you could tell this for yourself, Let's first uh, take a step back and discuss if this is even effective. Is there a blanket statement we could make? We say, yes, it's good for everyone or no, it's not good for everyone. So let's, let's think about this for a little bit. If you were to look at some of the most successful people in the world, this could be a business person you like. I don't know. You could think of Steve Jobs. You could think of Elon Musk. You could think of uh, Bill Gates. You could think of a, an athlete you like. Uh, your famous uh, basketball player. Your famous uh, soccer player. Your famous whatever it is. Again, I could I could put a bunch of names here, but it doesn't matter. It's you know in any domain or your favorite musician, your favorite singer, whatever. The question is this: What does history say? Do the most successful people, on average, again, we're not talking about extremes here. There's always extremes, but you're not playing extreme here because you you want to get into medical school. You're not playing a a lucky game here so let's not worry about extremes there is sometimes where you got to look at the extremes but this is not the case on average do most of these people have any sort of coaching do they get coached do they how do they learn stuff so if you go and study all these people you'll notice that one of the following things is happening they either have hired deliberately a coach at some part of their career and or they have uh, hired uh, or they have uh, uh, somehow found something similar to a course or a coaching program that helps them get to that first stage and then you, they build on that. So this is a common, and it's very common in across domains when you look at people who have done so well. In fact, a very good quality of someone who does really well is they understand their limitations and try to get over that limitation if the limitation is the thing that is the most important for their success. So, for example, if you want to be a great basketball player, obviously you got to learn how to dribble, uh, shoot the free throw, blah, 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 all that stuff. You don't care about learning how to solve complicated physics questions, right? So it depends what's most important to you. In this case, MCAT is the most important to you. So do you need a, a coach, a tutor, a course? I would say yes, for the most part, yes. So how, how come some people get away with this without having to get a coach or a tutor? So like, do some people do that? Yes, they do. In my experience, the people that do that, they have had a coach or a course before in the form of 
their school, their parents, their friends, somehow they've gotten to that. So sometimes, for example, you see someone who is uh, been uh, doing like, you know, 3.9, 4.0, 4.0 in school, their pre-medical uh, courses, which means they essentially know everything in the MCAT and they've time they're taking off their MCAT right after they finish all the core courses. So they know everything. So, which means, yes, they did practice. They just practiced before, right? If that's you, then great, then you don't need it. Then you have some pre-medical students that have a 4.0, but still need it. Why? Because they get stuck at the cars section because they never took humanities, creative writing, philosophy, history, etc. So then you got that portion as well. Then you got people who, um, whether they have taken these courses or not, they still need help because they never got a 3.9 or, or, or a 4.0, or it's not fresh in their mind. They need to do that again. So based on this, you need to decide where you are. You got to be honest with yourself. Like I cannot make that decision for you. Only you know where you're at and then decide if you need that or not. The second question you got to ask is the following. Is it better that I save a few hundred dollars, a few thousand dollars, a few whatever, it, I don't even care, like $10,000 now, but I have to redo the MCAT two, three, four times, and then eventually I give up and not become a medical doctor and give up on my dreams? Or is it better if I figure out that I need help, if I need help, spend whatever I need so that I never have to do this again and then have a fulfilling career as a physician that on average, depending on experience and specialty, obviously pays a quarter million a year for life. What is the equation of investment in my head? You know, you have to understand that as well. Again, that's something you need to understand and nobody else can tell you. I think it's super obvious. Some people don't get it at all and they rather not do well on the MCAT. And I've seen people that don't do well and they still not willing to get coaching. They do it again. They again fail the MCAT. They get rejected from every med school and then eventually they give up. They rather give up on their dream than to pay a few thousand dollars to get the coaching they need. Boggles my mind. That person was probably not even serious anyways to begin with, which means they wasted their time it's, or they were not intelligent enough to understand how to calculate price versus value. You pay, there is a value. Sometimes you pay, you know, nothing because there is no value in whatever it is, you know, like a piece of paper somebody's giving you, you're like, nah, I don't want it. Thanks so much. It's not a big deal. I'm not going to pay you. I'm not even going to pay you, you know, $1 for that piece of paper because I could go grab it from somewhere else for 10 cents. So you got to understand what that is. Like, what is it that, but you know, for example, I'll give you another example. Somebody says, Hey, you know what? I have a brand new Ferrari. I'm going to give it to you for $5,000, but you got to pay within the next hour. You check your bank account. You're like, oh shit, I don't have even 10 bucks in my bank account. But the value to price this, uh, is so different that I'm going to go figure this out. I'm going to borrow from my friends. I'm going to put in my credit card. I'm going to get a little, you know what? I'll be back in an hour. Hold, hold that Ferrari. I'll be back with cash in hand. So that's the first fundamental thing that you got to understand. Uh, and I think the answer is obvious. Now, what are some of the other ways you could figure out uh, whether or not you need an MCAT tutor versus an MCAT prep course. So MCAT prep course, to me, when you say MCAT prep course, I'm thinking of like a group session where you don't have one-on-one -on -one interaction. It's not a private, uh, and you just, uh, this is good for somebody who knows they need the help, but they don't need private one-on-one -on -one help. How would you know that? Uh, it depends on your personality. If, you know, so people like the MCAT prep course just because they want a structure so that somebody tells them, hey, study this now, now you study this, now you're going to take the exam, now you're going to do this, blah, 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 all that stuff. It allows them to have that discipline. And then sometimes if they have a question, it's not bad to have that person, but it's not personalized. Someone needs personalized, but they need a lot of help because they either tried a group session and it doesn't work for them, but they need that additional, hey, can you work with me? I don't want you to go and lecture because lecture, I could just read a book. I could just like, you're right. You could just read a book, watch a video, whatever. You rather get very concise, specialized uh, tips exactly for you and your circumstances. And you, you want to be able to, as you have questions, as things are transpiring, write in real time, ask questions and get a response. It's, it's usually faster, obviously, 
but obviously it's also more expensive. Uh, the results of tutoring are normally better than an MCAT prep course uh, as a result, just because it's such a different. And then again, price to value, the value you get from a private tutoring is way higher than the value you get from a course with like a hundred kids, 20 kids, whatever else it is. It just, it's just not the same. Now, I want to leave you with one final thought. I hope I got your, uh, your thought process going and uh, help you make that decision, but I'm going to leave you with one last exercise you could do to understand whether or not you need MCAT prep course or MCAT prep uh, tutor. And that's the following. When you start studying, so you say, hey, you know what? I'm going to write the MCAT in three months. Today is day one. Write a diagnostic test. What did you get? Did you, and make sure you simulate it exactly like the test. Don't take weird breaks. Write it from beginning to end. Only take breaks that are uh, indicative of the same exact breaks you will have at the actual MCAT. Write it in the same thing. Take it seriously. Dress the same way you're going to be dressed. Then, if your score comes back and you've scored 95th percentile or above on every single section, or even 90th percentile or above on every single section, you don't need. You don't need this. You know, even 85th percentile, you may not need it. If you're good, uh, you think you're, yeah, I'm, I'm good enough to be able to get me to 90th percentile or above which I think is the minimum you need on every section to do really well and have choice for medical school. So if that's the case, you know, uh, 85th to, to 95th percentile, you don't need it. Anything less than that, I recommend you decide which one it is. If you don't think you could catch up in the amount of time, go get yourself an MCAT prep course or MCAT prep tutor ASAP. If you understand the value and the price discrepancy. I, I feel like if the, you find the right course or the right tutor that could uh, get you to score really well so you can get into medical school, become a doctor, the value that you get is a thousand, 10,000 times. Think about a lifetime of salary, a lifetime of joy. It's not about salary. Obviously, you guys are not just doing it for salary, but it is a, it's a big part of it. It's a profession, right? You're getting paid for it. I've had different uh, podcasts where I talk that it cannot be the only reason, but it can be one of the reasons that, yes, you need to make a living. But And this will allow you to easily calculate that you're going to be making a thousand, ten thousand times, hundred thousand times, a million times the value of what you're going to invest in that MCAT prep course or MCAT tutor. That was it for me. I hope I was able to help you make that decision. Uh, and at the end of the day, it's a decision you got to make for yourself. If you like this, go ahead and share it with a friend who may be having a hard time making this decision for themselves. Subscribe so you don't miss any of my future episodes. And I hope to talk to you soon.